All right, if you're using Google Sheets, sometimes you just have a table of data. We made ours really small right here. And you want to summarize it. So we're going to go through three different ways to summarize this table. And as examples, we're going to just sum the amounts and count the amounts. And as we go through this, you can grab a copy of this template from the link in the description, because with all of these videos, you can follow along with your own template. And I'm hoping that when you go through these, you'll start to learn everything you need to know about Google Sheets. Okay, so the first technique that we're going to use is we're just going to build it with regular functions. So as we go into the next examples, you'll see that we're not using functions anymore, but right now we're just doing it in a way that's probably the most familiar to spreadsheet users. And in this first column, we want to produce a list of the unique values. So we'll just use the function called unique. And what unique does, it's going to sit just in cell D4, but it's going to write an array of all the unique values below it. So we'll show you what that means. We will give it this range. So we want just the uniques in A2 through A6. Close it off and it writes them all out. Really handy function and we will uh, show you right now the a great application of how it's handy because now we can do a sum if and in this next column a count if of the cases based on these unique values okay based on the output of the unique function so we will say sum if we're going to be looking at the original table in a2 through a6 but I want to fix the row numbers let me come over here and do this I'm going to be dragging this formula down into the subsequent rows, but I don't want A2 through A6 shifting. I want to stay two through six. And I want to sum it if it's the item wrench. Okay, so I'm going to pick that up from D4. I'll just type D4 here. And the sum range, which is the amounts that we want to sum are going to be B2 through B6. All right, that should do it. And we'll drag this down and it's a total of 41. If we look at the number of cases over on the left, it's 41. And for the count, it's going to be very similar to the sum if. So we'll do a count if and the range. So we don't need to select the amounts for this. We'll just select the range where the criteria was because each one of them is just counting as one no matter what it is. And the criteria is just uh, the item again. So the one thing we'll go back and do is fix those row numbers. Hit enter. And then we'll drag this down. And that's a count. You know there's five rows here. So there's these formulas are telling you there's two rows of saws, two rows with a wrench, and one with a hammer. All right, this technique works very well. As you can see, it's easy to understand. But if you add something to it, let's say we come and add drill, it doesn't update, right? So part of that has to do with the way that we constructed the formulas. We could come back and do uh, unique. We could just totally drop the ending row so we could do it A2 through A, and it does pick up drill. You have to be careful doing it that way though because it always picks up everything underneath it too if you add it later. This is actually throwing in a blank. So when I put an EE here, you can see it's returning blanks, uh, all of them here, and then that value. So that's probably not the cleanest way, but you could come to these formulas, drag it down. It's going to continue to work if you update all of the formulas. So these ranges are still wrong. So let's undo this. We'll move on to the next example. That's just a little bit more, it's actually probably a lot more flexible. Uh, this technique works. You just need to know how to update it. Uh, but let's get rid of that and move on to using a pivot table. So a pivot table is what I would typically do in this situation because it's fast to make, it's easy to customize, and you can change it on the fly uh, just with the menus and not having to change a bunch of formulas. So we will do, where is it? Insert pivot table. And once you create the pivot table, you'll tell it the data range is here. So this is the one thing that you would have to update if you added rows at the bottom, but it's only in one place. Well, we're going to put it on the existing sheet and place it right there. Okay, so left click to create the pivot table. 
and we want the rows to be uh, the items. So it already kind of did the unique function for us, right? It just returned the unique values. And then for the values, we want to do uh, the cases. We want to have a sum. It was already preset to sum, so that's done. And let's add the cases and switch that summarize by to count. And we need to adjust the columns a little bit. And there we go. That, that was faster. You have to know how to create a pivot table. But once you do, this can be a much faster, more flexible way of summarizing. I see that my headers are missing for some reason. Let me see if I can figure that out. I think it's just white font. I'll just put a black background on it. That's weird. I don't know why it's doing that, but that's a pivot table. Quick and easy, easy. There's really not that much more to show you on a pivot table unless you want to change something, right? So when we uh, before added the uh, another row, so we'll do a drill and we'll say there's three of them. Okay, it doesn't pick it up. So you have a little bit of adjustment, but what you can do is you can just uh, change it in one place. This top row here on the pivot table editor is your range. If you just add a row to it, it updates everything else. All right, so that's using a pivot table. Really great built-in way to summarize data and sheets. I'm going to delete that and show you the third technique. So this third technique, let me get rid of that formatting. This third technique, we're going to go back to a function, but instead of using a lot of different functions that kind of depend on each other, we're going to use something called the query function. And that will just be one function that has a lot of customization that you can do inside of it. It's hard to learn, but once you learn it, it's very flexible and easy to use. I'm going to come to actually the website that has all of this reference on it. It also has the links to the spreadsheet. I'm going to copy the uh, formula. So you don't have to watch me struggle through building it, although I probably could on the fly. Well, let's just paste that here and we'll talk about it. So we're using the query function. And the first thing that you want to give it is the range. So it's a typical function in that way. It needs to know what data it's working with. But then next, you build the query. So here are things you need to have a little bit more knowledge or really just copy and paste what's on the website and figure it out like I did on this video. Uh, but queries, you have to start them with a quote because it's kind of a string of instructions in here. And the first thing you do is select. So that's saying, what is this query going to return? So what you're returning is it speaks in columns instead of ranges here. So uh, you're returning column A just as it is. Then the sum of B and the count of B. So those are all in the same function but then say group it by A. So that's where we get down to just the unique values. So instead of using the unique function and building on that, we're saying, hey, put these all together based on what you see in A. And this has one header. So the query function is able to recognize a header row. So that way you don't have to retype it. And it also doesn't get stuck in being summarized in the table. We'll hit enter. And this is the output that it creates. So all of this is just sitting in D3. If I delete it, it all goes away. Let's redo it. So D, maybe, there we go. D3 is writing an array to the right and below all of this based on these values. So if I go into E4 and try to delete that, you can't because it's all output driven by D3. I don't know why the formatting looks weird there. If you want to modify this query at all, this next video will show you more about the query function, all of these different clauses that you can use to create your own query next time you use spreadsheet. Thanks for watching. It's nice to have you along.